Hi everyone and welcome back. Today we're talking about capital gains tax or CGT. In short, capital gains tax is the tax you pay on the profit that you make when you sell or dispose of an asset that's increased in value. But you pay tax on the gain you make, not the amount of money that you actually receive for the item. For example, if you bought a painting for £5,000 and you sold it later on for £25,000, you made a gain of £20,000, the £25,000 minus the £5,000 you paid for it, and that's the amount that you pay your capital gains tax on. Some assets are tax free and you don't have to pay capital gains tax if all of your gains in a year are under your tax free allowance, which I'll go into later. So what is disposing of an asset? Disposing of an asset includes selling it, giving it away as a gift or transferring it to somebody else, swapping it for something else, or getting compensation for it, such as an insurance payout if it's been lost or destroyed. You pay capital gains tax on the gain when you sell or dispose of most personal possessions worth £6,000 or more apart from your car, property that's not your main home. If you live in it, then you won't pay capital gains on it when you sell it. But your main home will be subject to capital gains tax if you've let it out, used it for business, or it's very large. And any shares that are not in an ISA or a PEP, as well as business assets. These are all known as chargeable assets. Also, if you sell or give away crypto assets like cryptocurrency or bitcoins, you should check if you have to pay capital gains tax and you can find that out from HMRC. Depending on the assets you're disposing of, you may be able to reduce the tax you pay by claiming relief. If you dispose of an asset that you jointly own with someone else, you have to pay capital gains tax on your share of the gain. So you won't pay tax on the whole gain, just your share of it. You only have to pay capital gains tax on your total gains above your annual tax-free allowance. You do not pay CGT on gifts to your husband, wife, civil partner, or a charity. You also do not pay capital gains tax on certain assets, including any gains you make from the following. ISAs or PEPs, UK government gilts and premium bonds, betting lottery or pools winnings, or when someone dies, or when you inherit an asset. Inheritance tax is usually paid by the estate of the person who's died, so you only have to work out if you need to pay capital gains tax if you later dispose of the asset. You may have to pay capital gains tax even if your asset is overseas and there are special UK rules if you're a UK resident but your permanent home is not in the UK. You also have to pay tax on gains you make on property and land in the UK even if you're not a UK resident for tax purposes but you don't pay capital gains tax on other UK assets, for example, shares in UK companies, unless you return to the UK within five years of leaving. You only have to pay capital gains tax on your overall gains above your tax-free allowance called the annual exempt amount as follows. This is £12,300 a year for individuals, or £6,150 a year for trusts. And you may also be able to reduce your tax bill by deducting losses or claiming reliefs, but this depends on the asset. There are special rules for capital gains tax on gifts or assets that you dispose of to your spouse or civil partner or a charity. Normal rules apply to gifts to other people. You do not pay capital gains tax on assets you give or sell to your husband, wife or civil partner unless you separated and did not live together at all in that tax year, or you gave them goods for their business to sell on. The tax year runs from the 6th of April to the 5th of April the following year. If your spouse or partner later sells the asset, they may have to pay tax on any gain, and their gain will be calculated on the difference between the value when you first owned the asset and when they disposed of it. If this was before April 1982, your spouse or civil partner should work out their gain using the market value on the 31st of March 1982 instead they should keep a record of what you paid for the asset. You don't have to pay capital gains tax on assets that you give away to charity, but you may have to pay if you sell an asset to charity for more than you paid for it and less than the market value. Work out your gain using the amount the charity actually pays you rather than the value of the asset. You need to pay capital gains tax when you sell an asset if your total taxable gains are above your annual capital gains tax allowance as previously mentioned. So first you need to work out the gain for each asset or your share of an asset if it's jointly owned. Do this for the personal possessions, shares or investments, UK property or business assets you've disposed of in the tax year. Add together the gains from each asset. Next, deduct any allowable losses. You'll need to report and pay capital gains tax if your taxable gains are above your allowance. If your total gains are less than the tax-free allowance, you do not have to pay CGT. 
but you still need to report your gains in your tax return if both of the following apply. The total amount you sold the assets for was more than four times your allowance and you're registered for self-assessment. There are different rules for reporting a loss. If you're non-resident, you need to tell HMRC when you sell property or land, even if your gain is below the tax free allowance or you make a loss. Non-residents do not pay tax on other capital gains. How and when you report capital gains tax over your annual allowance depends on what you made the gain on. There are different ways to report and pay capital gains tax due on the following items. UK residential property sold since the 6th of April 2020 and any other gains. To report any capital gains, you'll need the following. Calculations for each capital gain or loss that you report. Details of how much you bought and sold the asset for. The dates when you took ownership and disposed of the asset. And any other relevant details such as the costs of disposing of the asset and any tax relief you're entitled to. If you sold property in the UK on or after the 6th of April 2020, you must report and pay any tax due using a capital gains tax on UK property account. You must do this within 60 days of selling the property if the completion date was on or after the 27th of October 2021, 30 days of selling the property if the completion date was between the 6th of April 2020 and the 26th of October 2021. You may have to pay interest and a penalty if you do not report and pay on time. If you're not resident in the UK, you must report sales of UK property as a non-resident even if you have no tax to pay. If you're reporting on behalf of someone else or a trust, you need to use your own capital gains tax on UK property account to report. You'll need proof that you're allowed to report on their behalf, such as a lasting power of attorney. If the person has died, you'll need to give their date of death. If you're reporting as a trustee of a registered trust, you'll need the trust registration number or unique tax reference. There's a different way to report your client's capital gains tax on UK property as an agent. If your gain is not from residential property sold in the UK since the 6th of August 2020, you have a choice of how and when to report the tax. You can use the real-time capital gains tax service immediately if you know what you owe. You need to report your gain by the 31st of December in the tax year after you make the gain. For example, if you made a gain in the 2021 to 2022 tax year, you need to report it by the 31st of December 2022. You'll need a government gateway user ID and password. If you do not have a user ID, you can create one when you report and pay. After you've reported your gains, HMRC will send you a letter or an email giving you a payment reference number and telling you how to pay. If you need to change your report using the service, you'll need your report reference number starting with RTT. You'll get it by email within 10 days. You can report your gains in a self-assessment tax return in the tax year after you disposed of assets. But do not wait until the next tax year to report gains on UK residential property sold since the 6th of April 2020. You may have to pay interest and a penalty if you do. If you do not usually send a tax return, you need to register for self-assessment after the tax year you disposed of your chargeable assets. After you've sent your return, HMRC will tell you how much you owe in capital gains tax, how to pay, and when to pay by. You pay a different rate of tax on gains from residential property than you do on other assets, but you do not usually pay tax when you sell your home. If you're a higher or additional rate taxpayer, you'll pay 28% on your gains from residential property, but 20% on your gains from other chargeable assets. And if you're a basic rate taxpayer, the rate you pay depends on the size of your gain, your taxable income, and whether your gain is from residential property or other assets. First, you need to work out how much taxable income you have. This is your income minus your personal allowance and any other income tax reliefs that you're entitled to. Then work out your total taxable gains by deducting your tax-free allowance from your total taxable gains. Add this amount to your taxable income. If this amount is within the basic income tax band, you'll pay 10% on your gains or 18% on residential property, but you'll pay 20% or 28% on residential property for any amount above the basic tax rate. So here's an example. Your taxable income, your income minus your personal allowance and any income tax relief is £20,000 and your taxable gains are £12,600. Your gains are not from residential property. So first you deduct the capital gains tax free allowance from your taxable gain. For the 2021-22 tax year, the allowance is £12,300 so this will leave you with £300 to pay tax on. Add this amount to your taxable income, and because the combined amount of £20,300 is less than £37,700, this is the basic rate band for the 21-22 tax year, you will pay capital gains tax at 10%. This means you'll pay £30 in capital gains tax. You can use your tax-free allowance against the gains that would be charged at the highest rate, for example, where you would pay 28% tax. Trustees or personal representatives of someone who's died pay 28% on residential property 
and 20% on other chargeable assets. You'll pay 10% if you're a sole trader or partnership and your gains qualify for business asset disposal relief. You can report losses on a chargeable asset to HMRC to reduce your total taxable gains. Losses used in this way are called allowable losses. When you report a loss, the amount is deducted from the gains you made in the same tax year. If your total taxable gain is still above the tax free allowance, you can deduct unused losses from previous tax years. If they reduce your gains to the tax free allowance, you can carry forward the remaining losses to a future tax year. To claim for your loss, you need to calculate it on your tax return. If you've never made a gain and you're not registered for self assessment, you can write to HMRC instead. You do not have to report losses straight away. You can claim up to four years after the end of the tax year that you disposed of the asset. There's an exception for losses made before the 5th of April 1996, which you can still claim for. You must deduct these after any more recent losses. As you do not usually pay capital gains tax on assets you give or sell to your spouse or civil partner, you cannot claim losses against these assets and you cannot deduct a loss from giving, selling or disposing of an asset to a family member unless you're offsetting a gain from the same person. This also applies to connected people such as business partners. HMRC define connected people as including your brothers, sisters, parents, grandparents, children and grandchildren and their husbands, wives or civil partners, the brothers, sisters, parents, grandparents, children and grandchildren of your husband, wife or civil partner and their husbands, wives or civil partners, business partners, a company you control and trustees, whether you're the settler or someone connected to you is. You can also claim losses on assets that you still own if they become worthless or of negligible value. HMRC has guidance on the special rules for losses when someone dies, if you're non-resident and sell UK property or land, if you've temporarily lived abroad as a non-resident, from your income on shares that are unquoted or in enterprise investment schemes, or on overseas assets if you're non-domiciled in the UK and have claimed the remittance basis. You need to collect records to work out your gains and fill in your tax return. You must keep them for at least a year after the self-assessment deadline. You'll need to keep records for longer if you sent your tax return late or HMRC has started a check into your return. Businesses must keep records for five years after the deadline. Records you keep should include receipts, bills and invoices that show the date and the amount that you paid for an asset, of any additional costs like fees for professional advice, stamp duty, improvement costs or to establish the market value you received for the asset, including things like payments you get later in instalments or compensation if the asset was damaged. Also, keep any contracts for buying and selling the asset, for example, from solicitors or stockbrokers and copies of any valuations. If you do not have records, you must try to recreate your records if you cannot replace them after they've been lost, stolen or destroyed. If you fill in your tax return using recreated records, you'll need to show where figures are estimated that you want HMRC to accept as final, or provisional that you'll update later with the actual figures. Your gain is usually the difference between what you paid for an asset and what you sold it for, but there are some situations where you use the market value instead. For gifts, you use the market value at the date of the gift. For assets sold for less than they were worth to help the buyer, use the date of the sale. For inherited assets where you do not know the inheritance tax value, use the date of death. For assets owned before April 1982, use the market value as at the 31st of March 1982. HMRC can check your valuation. After you've disposed of the asset, complete a post-transaction valuation check form and return it to the address on the form, but you must allow at least three months for HMRC to respond to you. That's all guys, I hope that's been helpful and I'll see you next time.